You're probably wondering the importance of showing you my breakfast. Sounds dumb, looks dumb. You probably don't care about what I'm eating, but I feel like it is so important to further explain later on in this video because this does have a very important thing with acne and why the ordinary works. Before we jump into why the ordinary works, I feel like I need to give you guys some background information. If you guys have seen my channel, you know I used to be vegan for many, many, many years. I used to be pretty skinny, pretty fit and toned. So basically I thought I was super, super healthy all up until one night. This one night completely changed my entire life. And it's been almost four years now and I have not been the same since. I basically ate Chipotle, blew up. I look like I was like six months pregnant. Super painful. If you guys want to know more about that whole scenario, I will leave a video up above that literally goes into a gross amount of detail. I'll leave it on this one just for discretion. After that night, I've been dealing with crazy, crazy heavy periods, super bad acne, and the worst of all is the horrible, horrible, horrible bloating issues. that I've just not really been able to get rid of. Let's show them. Mm. Quick pause, I'm sure you guys are wondering how anything to do with my breakfast and gut issues have anything to do with you guys looking up and wanting to know more about why the ordinary works. Keep listening and we'll wrap up very quickly. This is all super, super important and why it kickstarted me to go to a naturopath. If you guys don't know what a naturopath is, it's basically a more holistic doctor that can also do things that a doctor can also do and prescribe. Specifically, my naturopath was a doctor at a university hospital here for many, many, many years and her philosophy was that she wanted to bring health and care back into healthcare. So when I read her profile on her website, I was so drawn to her out of all the other naturopaths in my state. So I decided at basically the first week of quarantine to go see her, pretty much knew exactly what was going on, ended up having to take a poo sample test and send my poo, AKA a shipment, to Washington DC, where they then examined my specimen. Should I film this or not to film this? It's definitely not gonna be postable. It's like wet, slimy rocks. Got Dr. Mel in the office here to examine my own specimen. That's a fun looking spoon. Is that vigorously enough for you? Long story short, I was diagnosed with lots of crazy things. SIBO, which is small intestinal bacteria overgrowth, which is pretty hard to get rid of. Severe EPI, which is severe exocrine pancreatic insufficiency. So my pancreas does not have the right enzymes to break down food correctly. I have an overgrowth of strep bacteria and staph bacteria in my gut, malabsorption, chronically fatigued, and where I was going with this, I am sensitive to gluten and eggs, which I never was before in my entire life. To go a little bit further, before I met my naturopath, I decided, okay, I'm gonna not be vegan anymore, I'm gonna eat eggs. First thing that happened, I broke out across my entire face uh, pretty, pretty awfully, and I've been dealing with the cystic acne for about a year. Just now, my skin is finally clearing up. The only reason why I was able to get clear skin is getting the poo sample test and realizing what bacteria were in my gut and what kills off these bacteria. And you're probably like, okay, am I supposed to drink the ordinary? No. So I hope that kind of wraps up that story for you just a little bit to make a little bit more sense before we jump into the reasons why you do have acne and why The Ordinary helps acne so, so much. And I'm so excited to share this information with you guys because I have not seen one other person on YouTube, on Instagram, or any other social media platform talk about the true reasons of why you do have acne and the true reasons of why Ordinary cures it. I know you guys probably don't have SIBO, you weren't vegan, you probably don't have all these other crazy things, but there are very close similarities in them and there is some science behind this and I can't wait to get into it with you guys. So I'm gonna finish my yummy um, gluten-free, egg-free breakfast and I will see you guys in just a minute. Anyways, I hope you guys really do enjoy this video. If you do, please leave me a thumbs up and subscribe down below as it really supports me and my channel. Here's a picture again of my acne at its worst over the past year. My skin now with makeup and here's another picture without makeup that we guys can get like 
a clearer look at the acne situation. Today's video is all about the ordinary and some things you may have not known about them, some things you may not know about acne, some tips and tricks on how to use the ordinary, and of course my overall review. Chances are that you guys have heard of the ordinary, that's why you have clicked on this video. The ordinary has been around longer than TikTok, but most people seem to know about the brand purely from TikTok. So that is one reason I really wanted to hate the ordinary because I am just not a fan of TikTok. I have a million views on one of my my videos and it's literally just a video of my sink. It makes absolutely no sense to me. So if you want to follow me on TikTok, I'll leave it down below for you guys. But uh, yeah, my sink has a million views. Other than that, I really never get on TikTok. Anyways, The Ordinary is a really awesome skincare brand. The reason I believe it to be a really amazing skincare brand is because they use whole ingredients in their products. For example, most brands will advertise a moisturizer to be a, an extremely hydrating hyaluronic acid moisturizer, but it has a lot of different hydrating ingredients, maybe some not so good ingredients in there like alcohol. The Ordinary is great just because it is just that one ingredient or some Sometimes just two ingredients, but that's literally what the name of the product is. For example, one of Ordinary's best selling products is the AHA 30% BHA 2% peeling solution. So as the ordinary has rose within the skincare community as well as the TikTok community, it seems like a lot of the younger generation is trying the ordinary without really knowing why it works or the reason that it is just pure product. It can be a little dangerous, especially knowing what ingredients or products to mix with each other versus what not to mix with each other. So I hope to tackle those things in this video. So I pulled these out of my skincare drawer. I have, this is the Niacinamide 10% plus 1% zinc. Again, the 30% AHA, BHA 2% solution. The 100% plant derived squalane. The hyaluronic acid 2% plus B5. And lastly, I have the, the ascorbic acid, which is vitamin C. Let's just jump into the AHA 30%, BHA 2%. This is an amazing product. It is well known for this vampy color, kind of like prune color. Apply this all over a dry face after cleansing. This just really helps to break down any extra dead skin that you have on the surface of your face. And this should be used only as a 10 minute chemical exfoliation session. I have used this about 10 times and I do have a lot of leftover product. I've only used about this much. A little bit of this product goes so long, but if it's your first time using this, I recommend you only start with three minutes to see how your face is reacting to it. When you first use it, you may notice a little bit of tingling effect. So just be cautious of that. That is supposed to happen. That is normal. Now, I also suggest you not use this more than once every four days. I would almost even go as far to say once a week. This is very, very powerful and you really do not want to overdo it. This can also make your skin sensitive to the sun. So make sure you always have an SPF, either primer, foundation, or lotion to put on your skin after using this. I have also used this on my shoulders because my shoulders in the summer do tend to get dry. But again, please apply SPF as it really uh, will protect your skin from sunspots and aging. Currently editing and realize I forgot one of the most important parts about this AHA BHA 2% peeling solution. One, as I mentioned, it's the best thing to use for a chemical exfoliation. The reason for this, if you are using a physical exfoliant on your skin, it does tend to make micro tears in your skin and can lead to overall damage to skin in the future as well as some extra sensitivity. Your makeup just applies so much better. Your skincare is absorbed so much easier and the last thing I forgot to mention is that it really does help to clear out your pores. So if you have that weird layer of skin on top where it's like oily, grimy, greasy, even if you're cleansing your skin, you still have that layer of dead skin on the surface. When you use this AHA peeling solution, it really does help to cleanse out your pores. Clean out dead skin cells, oil, and sebum. Those things are all a part of what can cause acne in certain situations. Now, to me, this wasn't the biggest thing about curing acne, although it was really good at resurfacing the moisture barrier on my skin and also allowing my other skincare to absorb a lot easier into the skin and getting a lot more benefits out of these other products that I'm about to go over with you guys. I hope that made sense. I just wanted to further explain that because I totally missed that portion in this video. This primarily for me at least is just 
for exfoliation. After you use this, you'll definitely notice that other products like moisturizers or other hydrating ingredients will sink into the skin so much easier and do their job. That way, those dead skin particles are not getting in the way to hydrating your skin. You will also notice if you're someone who wears foundation or any sort of makeup that your foundation just sits so much nicer. I have also noticed a brighter complexion after using this. So overall, this is a fantastic, fantastic product but you do have to be careful and just be mindful while using this. These are very, very potent products. The next product is niacinamide. This is 10% niacinamide and zinc 1%. Let's talk about niacinamide for a second. So niacin is vitamin B3 and is primarily used for oily skin, acne, and large pores and decrease your sebum production. Now this is probably gonna be one of my most favorite parts of this video, which I think every single person that knows about the ordinary or wants to use the ordinary, especially if you have acne needs to know. So we do see a lot of acne fighting products or anti-acne or acne treatment, but really what is acne and what causes it? So a lot of brands will say will kill acne causing bacteria. Well, I have been studying this for six months now, or you know I've been dealing with some crazy gut issues. I was vegan for a very long time, yada yada, had to end a vegan diet because it made my stomach acid very low. I now have SIBO, crazy, lots of symptoms, but narrowing down what type of bacteria I had in my gut from a poop sample test. <laughs> has been so revolutionary for me. I have an overgrowth of staph and strep. Types of bacteria are primarily the causes of acne. So I have been dealing with this acne for over a year and as you can see it is finally starting to heal and it is because I recognized what type of bacteria this is and how to kill it. After doing months of research, I have figured out that staph is the leading cause of acne. And I'm not talking about like a staph infection, like you cut yourself on something and you were exposed to staph. We naturally have staph in our gut, but they can sometimes become more prevalent. So to give you an example, this acne that I thought I had for over a year, I could swear it was a hormonal issue, hormonal imbalance. I got my hormones checked and they were fine. I was also going through a lot of gut issues. So I, you know, I knew whatever happens in the gut is prevalent and comes out on the outside. And this is a way for your body to see, hey guys, there's like something going on on the inside. I have the big, thick bubbles under the skin and they hurt and they would stay under the skin for like a month, sometimes two to three months, and then randomly they would become a whitehead, I'd pop them, and then as soon as it would pop, I would get one right next to it. I started realizing that, oh my gosh, this acne is spreading in basically the same areas that I was popping it. This bacteria spreads so, so easily. Every single person on this planet has staph bacteria living on the surface of their skin. It doesn't usually affect people. What usually affects people is the staph coming from inside the gut. This is your body's way of actually purging and getting rid of the staph. When it then rises to the surface of the skin, you have more staph, the white blood cells, everything mixes, and basically it's very easily spread. So biggest tip I have on a side note, stop popping your pimples, change your pillowcases every single night. You may be asking why am I talking about staph bacteria? Because again, it is the leading cause of acne that I hear no one talk about. So why does the ordinary work? Well, because niacin in the niacinamide product, niacin is vitamin B3, kills this bacteria. Again, after months and months of research, the only things that kill staph bacteria is niacinamide, benzenol peroxide, and ascorbic acid, which is basically vitamin C. So these three things is literally the only thing that kills it. <laughs> as well as adjusting your diet and understanding how to eat correctly for the types of bacteria that you have. Now I am not dismissing if you do have a hormonal imbalance. Staph acne does show up and mainly does look like hormonal imbalance. But to further explain, and now you guys are gonna think I'm crazy, these bacteria actually cause heavier periods. They cause painful periods, they cause, they're actually one of the root causes of endometriosis. Guys, I know I'm sounding crazy that I'm saying bacteria causes endometriosis, but I am not joking with you guys. If you have acne, if you have gut issues, if you have poop issues, if you have bloating, um, if you're extremely fatigued, if you're always tired for some reason, all of these things, I'm not joking, 
your whole system is connected and it's a domino effect. I can't believe I'm just now finding this stuff out, but I just really need to share it with you guys because I have had the biggest transformation. I mean, this was just weeks ago. Anyways, I have digressed a lot, but that is so important for you guys you need to know the true cause of acne and of course some other health issues if you happen to be going through them and to mention the last component is zinc zinc really helps if you have eczema so you can also apply this on any part of your body helps to rejuvenate your skin and it's a very powerful antioxidant next is the 100% plant derived squalane now there is animal derived squalane which actually comes from I believe shark fin or shark liver or something ridiculous so if you're gonna try squalane make sure to go plant derived route as it is a lot more natural and of course does not cause harm on any being on this earth um, and it's actually a lot more powerful for your skin squalane is a purely for hydration oil formula and I think it is just beautiful on the skin I love putting this every single night before bed of course letting it dry before I put my face on a pillow because you do not want an oily pillow uh, but it is quickly absorbed and in just a little bit I will show you guys like my routine and how I use all of these products every single night but the squalane basically is amazing for hydration and if you have oily skin like I do some reason that this oil just works so well with oily skin and again it's just quickly absorbed and I really enjoy this. Let's talk about hyaluronic acid. I love hyaluronic acid. There are some things you need to know about hyaluronic acid before getting sucked in like I did. So of course I mindlessly went and bought lots of products with hyaluronic acid in it and not really keeping in mind the environment that I live in and I've heard lots of things about using hyaluronic acid if you're in the desert. So if you know, hyaluronic acid is a humectant, which means it draws in moisture from the air or your environment and absorbs it into the skin. If you do not have any moisture in the air, it tends to then draw moisture out of your skin, giving you the negative effect that you just don't want. As you guys know, I live in the desert and I still love and use hyaluronic acid. So I just wanted to give you a few quick tips on how to use it because you can still get away with using hyaluronic acid in a drier climate. These are some must do things so if you want to use hyaluronic acid and I actually believe you should use hyaluronic acid even if you live in a desert because there's ways to work around it and still make it benefit your skin so before I go in with hyaluronic acid I will spritz my face with the youth to the people this is the adaptogen soothe hydrate activated mist this has reishi ashwagandha which is derived from a mushroom and it also has hyaluronic acid in here as well i'll quickly just spritz my face use the hyaluronic acid and then of course go in with like the rest of my skincare products once i finish up i let it dry just slightly probably for like 30 seconds and then i'll go in with the evian spraying water and i just quickly mist my skin and i then tap the moisture from this water into my skin. Now, I really like the Evian water and I would suggest to use this over just getting sink water and kind of splashing your face or putting it in a spritzer and spritzing your face. Doing this kind of made a moisture barrier on the skin and it just helps your skin to not necessarily pull the moisture out of your skin, but pulling moisture from the products that you've put on top as well as spritzing your face with water. I do this morning and night and I believe it has really, really helped my skin. Now, hyaluronic acid is basically does nothing for acne. It's purely just moisture and hydration into the skin. It also is responsible for like that K-beauty, bouncy, glassy skin, which I love. And the last product is just a vitamin C. I'm almost halfway through my bottle. I've been using this for about two to three months now, and it has lasted quite a while. Time to get a new one. And you know because of the color. Now mine is still very much clear, so I'm probably good for a little bit longer. Most ascorbic acid tends to get kind of weird smelling and a little bit brown which means it's starting to go bad so if you do have this product make sure to keep it in a very dry area away from the sun now ascorbic acid does have a lot of benefits as well as killing acne causing bacteria which you now know is staph but it does have a lot of information so I'm just gonna quickly read about it here so vitamin C is also known as ascorbic acid vitamin C is necessary for the growth development and repair of all bodily tissue it's involved in many bodily function including including formation of collagen absorption of iron the immune system wound healing and the maintenance of cartilage bones and teeth so here's some other things specifically for your face it's an antioxidant meaning it protects skin cells from damaging free radicals causing caused by 
UV exposure. It also inhabits melanin production in the skin, which helps to lighten hyperpigmentation, brown spots, even out the skin tone, and enhance skin radiance. So overall, I would say from that leftover acne that I did have, I have noticed that it has slightly helped break up those dark spots that I have left over from acne. Usually retinol is a perfect ingredient for doing that, and I'll kind of get into some more retinol ingredients and in products in a minute. So this is my set of The Ordinary. Now one thing I actually was gonna go buy a while ago, and then of course everyone bought The Ordinary all at once. Every Ulta near me is sold out, uh, but they just got theirs in today because I called. I am going to go buy the Squalene Cleanser, and I'm really excited for that because I've noticed every cleanser that I have been using, it seems to just strip my skin too much and not adding in any hydration. Um, so as soon as I get out of the shower, my skin is dry, like I mentioned earlier. So Squalene Cleanser is on my list to go get. As far as my set here, I think this is a perfect set whether you have acne or not to just start with first. I will leave all these products listed down below for you guys. If you guys have made it this long into the video, we are at 22 minutes so far. So there are three more products that I really wanna go into very quickly. Just because in the video when I was editing, I realized it just took me way too long to quickly mention a few things. So I'm gonna do that very quickly here. So the first product I wanna mention, this is by Paula's Choice. This is a benzenol peroxide treatment that is a 5% and the reason I'm mentioning this is because like I said there was a few other products and ingredients I was talking to you guys about that does kill acne causing bacteria which we now know is staph. There are of course many other different types of bacteria that cause acne. Staph just happens to be one of the most acne causing bacteria and that can stem from either inside the gut or just an overgrowth of it on the skin and both are kind of like a dominant effect and they definitely have to do with each other. Benzenol peroxide is very 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 efficient of killing a staph bacteria. I've done so much research so other than the ordinary anything with benzenol peroxide is going to be very very helpful. This product from Paula's Choice this one is very strong. I only recommend to use this about once a week and I just put it on the blemish areas. Um, of course so, you know, if I'm breaking out right here or on my neck, I'll just kind of rub it into that area, not necessarily put it on a specific spot. Just because, again, these are bacteria and they can spread very easily. So I do put it in the general area, but I will not put it over my entire face because this can be drying. But if you do hyaluronic acid, it will really help to keep your skin hydrated. You do not want to use benzenol peroxide with any other harsh chemical like an AHA or BHA. Definitely a no-go. Do not use this with niacinamide or ascorbic acid. So on nights that I use this, I only use this and put on some moisturizers with it. Other than that, I do want to recommend I love... I love glow recipe. Now every single night I use their watermelon glow sleeping mask. This also does have hyaluronic acid and a lot of other hydrating ingredients but this is one I literally use every single night and it just does give me that glassy skin look right after applying skincare and it also carries over into the next day every time I apply my makeup. So highly highly recommend this if you were someone with really dry skin or even oily skin. I personally would recommend this even more so towards oily skin. It also helps to calm your oils as well and finally I love using the avocado melt retinol sleeping mask so on nights I don't use this I maybe use this once or twice a week and I focus this on areas especially where I do have scarring this really really helps to reduce scarring and hyperpigmentation um, as well as a lot of other things so I know Ordinary does have a retinol. I have not purchased that one yet just because I do have quite a lot of this left over. And so far, I really do like these. Now, I know during this video, I did not touch on mixing of the Ordinary products. I did have the whole thing filmed on mixing, but this video is just getting so, so long. So if you guys do wanna see more in-depth video about the Ordinary, about mixing, and my AM and PM routine using this, um, again, this has honestly been like a week or so since I started editing this video. My skin has honestly just continued to keep getting clearer every single day. So I would love to film an update for you guys and give you even more update before and after pictures. I know lots of people love seeing before and after pictures. If you guys are having acne issues, gut issues, to me these things are super, super related as well as menstrual issues. And I would love to know if there's any correlation that you guys have that are very similar. So, and again, leave those comments because I love reading y'all's comments. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.